Very pleased to be joined now by Mason Jones, former Cage Warriors dual weight world champion, competing in the UFC lightweight division this weekend against David Onama. Uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster this week. New opponent, undefeated. You're welcoming to, to him to the UFC. How's it been going into this one? Uh, slightly annoying. Um, obviously, uh, I, I was told I was rematching Alan. I was hoping to fight um, in September. Then I got pushed back um, to the October card. So it was good. I got more time to spend in camp. And then, um, obviously, I, was, I thought I was fighting at Alan. And then um, Wednesday, I got the news that um, Alan's got problems with his eye, um, which to me just... Uh, yeah. To me, I didn't expect Alan to take the rematch. And when he did, um, I knew he'd be looking for a way out. So um, I, it was no surprise when he pulled. It was just annoying that he pulled in the time frame he did. So for David to step up and take the opportunity on that much days, no waste. I'm so thankful because um, I am really desperate to get back in there and get back fighting. Um, I've looked at David up. Um, we've had all morning looking at his fights and different things. And um, he's... Very, very good. Um, he's a well-run prospect. Um, he's good everywhere. I just don't think he's good enough. Um, I think I'm more than uh, capable of beating him in any area. Um, I think my striking's better. I think my wrestling's better. I think my jiu-jitsu's better. And I think every area this fight goes, I'm going to win. So, yeah, it's a perfect matchup for me. And, uh, yeah, but I'll be looking forward to win with fashion on the weekend. Is the uh, Alan Patrick fight put to bed now? Is that... Is that done with, or is that a score you still need to settle at some point, do you think? To be fair, I, um, I'm not a type of person to start calling people out. Um, I'm happy just to, to win this fight and then look to the future and see what happens. Um, but you never know. Um, I know he's said he'll be better by early November, so um, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Um, like I said, I've got to get past David first and go from there. Like I'm not against the rematch because we, the first fight went so much my way, but um, I'm also... One, not looking to call anyone out. And two, um, like I said, not overlooking to even in the slightest. Um, he's still 8 know. Um, he's got 18 amateur fights. And he's a, a decent all around. He comes from a good gym. Um, he, he hits hard. And again, it only, it only takes one. It only takes one shot. How much do you study tape? You know, a lot of fighters like to focus primarily on themselves. Others are meticulous in, in studying opponents. Where do you stand? I mean, how difficult is it when you've got a guy coming in at this short notice? Uh, to be fair, if 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 he was um, like a world-level wrestler, a D1 wrestler, then I'd have a bit more uh, sort of trouble. If he was, I don't know, like an IBJJF or Jiu-Jitsu, do you Nag or whatever, world champion who was awesome submitting people or like a D1 like wrestler, like I said, then I think it would sort of, it would have made a difference and then I would have required a lot more looking in, into and obviously hesitance before taking because those are not the fights you take on short notice. Those are the guys you pay heavily for. Um, I prepared for Alan, who was a wild striker with um, bursts of wrestling, same as he did in the last fight. I just expected him to be fitter and stronger. So I prepared for that. Um, so to get changed up to um, from a southpaw um, striker and then also wrestler to a guy who strikes in both but mainly stays orthodox, it's a bit different, but I, I'm, I'm happy to bet the house on any, anyone uh, when it comes to my striking. Um, I've sparred with world champion guys in MMA, boxing, um, taekwondo, everything. So um, I'm happy to deal with people whatever style they're in. And um, like when I met, one of my training partners back in Team Alphamil is a Russian world champion kickboxer. And um, we have some tear-ups. I trained with Andre Feely, who has some tear-ups. And um, I just don't see David being anywhere on the comparison to those guys. Um, so for me, it just everything's falling into place. And um, I hope David makes it to fight day. And um, I'm really looking forward, like I said, to really showing the world exactly why I can do and the reason why I'm where I am. Do you reckon Team Alpha Males quietly had a bit of a cracking year? Is there quite good vibes over there at the moment? It's just the sparring partners at the moment is just insane over there. Um, like... I've got such a good camaraderie with the guys there and um, we get on so well in training like Andre Feely, Mike Malott, who we saw on the contender with his 37 second um, guillotine. Um, Chris Gonzalez, who just lost um, a fight against the belt on number five. Um, then there's Max Griffin, who's also helped me this camp. Like this is the thing, it's like 
there was no hesitation in taking this fight because I spar with Max Griffin. Uh, Max Griffin, we've been sparring with is over 200 pounds and hits like an absolute steam train. And we have some absolute tear ups and I guess controlled. But I know that if I can take sparring with him, then this guy coming in and throwing hard is not going to affect me at all. So, again, I'm not underestimating him. He's a dangerous striker, but I am who I am and I do what I do. And I, I just see it going the, the one way, and that's me decimating him. It's a very exciting time for British MMA at the moment. Uh, it seems like an absolute golden generation. Do you feel that? And uh, and how do you feel about Paddy Pimblett's kind of buzz? I feel like a lot of the MMA websites, there's a lot of articles about him, and I know you're linked to fighting him when you're in Cage Warriors. Are you pleased, pleased for him, or, or is it someone that you may oh, no, of you course. Know? Of course I'm pleased for him. Um, it's happy to see him doing well. And like um, I, my, my parents were sending me the screenshot when he got a £1 million um, pound deal whatever he did and it's just nice to see someone really breaking through and um like i've i've got nothing but good um sort of feelings to people like that like if we fought i have my own feelings on what would happen and i've always had my feelings on what would happen but um i love seeing british guys do well like um it's not this whole thing of where you're against everyone like a lot of the time like unless they're in front of you i just want to see people do well and especially in mma because seeing these people earn these these deals and it just helps for all of us. It helps the world. Like um, people always ask questions about the, the Paul brothers when it comes to boxing and what we think on that and MMA fights. And I just think they're doing the well, they're doing something amazing. Like um, their market is so well. And like, if you're looking at them and hating them and not looking at them and thinking, how can I get to that level of marketing? Then you're in the, you're doing the wrong thing. Like for me, it's all about growing as a business and a product as well as just a fire. Like, the easy part for me is learning how to fight. I've always been good at fighting and I'm around the best people in the world. The hard part is trying to sort your finances out because I want to be able to do a roving camp. So I want to be able to bring my t- my coaches with me to Team Alpha so I get the personal coaching and it, it fills all the gaps. I get the, the coaching from Tam, I get the bodies from Tam and I get my own coaches involved. I've been able to do both. And um, like living in California is expensive. I spent the last six months there um, with 10 days out. And um, I've just been grinding for those six months, but it's expensive, an expensive place to be. So any way I can look to make a living and make money is a way to do it. Like, I don't want to have to look to my fight purses to survive. When you do that, you get too, you get tied in the wrong ways. You take fights you don't need. You take fights against opponents you don't need. When you have that freedom where fighting, you can pick who you want to fight and you can just take smart fights and you can build yourself up and you're not, stuck against the wall where you, uh, I have to fight because otherwise I need to cover bills, but you're injured and you're taking fights when you're injured. That That's not a good place to be. Where I am is a good place at the moment, but I've still got a lot of growing room. Um, this fight was um, was starting to get a bit worrisome for me because obviously I've been in camp for six months and I only got half my money against the Allen fight. So with the expense I paid out, this fight was really found the place well for me. And um, I just trust my management and stuff. But yeah, the Paddy question, I wish him all the best. And um, I really wish, really do hope he does well. Um, it's just the fact that I know that if we end up facing off against each other, then it's a completely different ballgame. In that regard, has uh, Uriah Faber been helpful? Because he's he knows he's fought in car parks, but he then became an absolute star and he's got multiple businesses. Do you know what I mean? He seemed to have that balance really well. Yeah, he's again it's the same as my fight career i take um it's a beg borrow and steal mentality we call it so um you beg for answers you steal answers and you uh borrow answers so it's like um like andre feely throws a one two right blinder really well so like i'd be begging him to show me different things and i've been stealing the stuff he shows me and different things like that so um i use the same mentality when it comes to everything in life like with um uriah i see the stuff he's doing and the way he does things now well he's invested here and there and i'm trying to get my own myself on track i'm trying to get my own thing started and um it's just a, it's just hard it's a hard place to be especially when I'm sort of slowly starting to do more of my camps at Team Alpha Mill. I need to get a base set up there and then my expenses increase. And it's just, it always seems like when I actually start making money, because this has been a lot of the first year in my MMA career where I've actually started to make decent money. And I don't mean decent, I mean like I've actually made a profit. I remember my first three years in Cage Warriors, I was losing money. And then the last two, I started just cut even. And I was living at home and still having good sponsors help me with different things. And 
my sponsors have followed me to the US, but US is a lot more expensive. So again, um, I'm starting to come close to cutting even. So I need to start building up my business savvy sense and start my own my own sort of role ball rolling. But uh, yeah, that's that's a different matter entirely. And uh, yeah, focus on me smashing Tavian on Saturday. Well, there, uh, look, there's another guy who uh, certainly smashed it in terms of prize fighting and, and winning fights, winning two belts in Cage Warriors, Conor McGregor, but he's, he's, he's now punched an Italian DJ, allegedly. What are your thoughts on that? You must get asked about him in interviews a lot just because of the Cage Warriors thing and the Cage Warriors boys became trailblazers. I mean, all of you just kind of, there's been a kind of... Hearing it through. Yeah, exactly. We really ripped the door down, yeah. Um, yeah. I think he did well. Um, I just don't understand why you come back in into MMA after the um, the whole Mayweather stuff. Like when you make it into that realm, just live the lifestyle, beat YouTubers up for money, um, and just there's better ways to make money. But he does love MMA. That's easy to see. I just think he's he is who he is, and I don't think he sort of surrounded himself with the right people. Or he's doing the right things. I just think he's sort of chasing this lifestyle. And he's sort of trying to chase things that no longer sort of belong. He no longer belongs in. Like, I just don't think like the whole second fight against Pore was a good move. But then you look at the money they're off of these fights. And I just think there was, like I said, there was better ways for him to make money um, and better things for him to do. But when you love the sport as much as we all do, I can un understand it. So I understand both sides, but I just, I don't, the only thing I don't understand is, getting into trouble outside with all this stuff and this fighting and different things that have happened across the years. Like the same with John Jones. Um, the, I, apart from the steroids thing, because the steroids thing just literally really ruined John Jones for me when I was younger because I liked John Jones' style. I liked the way he fought, the way he was on top. He was on top. And then the steroids thing really just removed him from the equation completely. Like I don't count John Jones as one of the greats because he literally admitted to deliberately trying to cheat the system and it's just anyway but um the stuff of him in trouble all the time is just i just don't understand why you can't just stay out of trouble like this this personality of where you get to this point that you just think you can get away with everything because you've got money it's just a dangerous place to be um at the end of the day especially when you're in the limelight like it, they're both starting to get into their early 30s um their mid 30s like that's starting to come to the time where you really want to start looking to step away from the sport and like they surround themselves with the right platforms where they can. So again, you should just be looking for an exit and truly doing it right. Like um, I, the Habib, the way Habib got out um, is something I'm hoping to sort of emulate one day. Um, he got to the top, he defended a few times and he exited. Uh, people were saying, should he have defended a few more times? He wasn't comfortable defending a few more times and um, he did the right thing. Um, I know I have no doubt that he's got multiple business enterprises and he's set for life. He's well in with a lot of the Russians and a lot of the um, uh, the Middle Easterns. So um, the money he's in circulating is insane. So um, yeah, he, they did the right thing. Like these are the guys you want to get in for. You need to get in and always have an extra plan to get out because no one wants to be at the end of their career um, with no money left and end up having to go in and start grinding from the bottom up. It's just too late. So you need to make sure that your exit plans um, sort of not set in stone, but you've got a target on what you want to do. For me, I, I want five passive businesses. That's what I've always wanted to do. So, um, uh, start with one, I'm going to go from there. Very smart. It's very smart. Uh, last question, mate. Um, I know MMA has a habit of laughing at everybody's plans, you know, Every, <laughs> you know, better than anybody the last few weeks, right? But do you have a plan? It's clear you're coming for the belt, right? So, you know, are you thinking? Oh, I'll be top 15 then, top 10 then, top five then, and then it's going to be Poirier, then it's going to be Oliveira. Have you got that mapped out? Yeah, so, uh, like, I want to start calling people out, but um, I'm not in the position to call people out. Um, I lost my debut against Mike because I made mistakes. Um, it was a close fight, but I, I lost that fight. Um, I'll equally say I lost that fight. It was close, but I didn't do enough to win. And that was a fight that I was more than capable of winning. Uh, my last fight, I should have finished in the first round. Um, could have finished in the first round and then obviously the second I made a mistake and ended up with no contest. I needed first get a win underneath me, then look to get another win underneath me and stabilize my foundations, look to get a new contract from the UFC and then I can start look, looking to call people out and I can start being a bit more excited about things and picking fights that work for me. The only problem with that 
is if you call someone out and they're not physically ready, you can end up doing what happened to a few of the guys they train with, which is you end up snowballing, losing time because you're waiting for people to rest up and get ready for a fight. Um, so this this swings and roundabouts to everything. Um, to be fair, I've got a good manager and um, we're going the right way about things. So um, like I said, beat David and then we'll go from there. Um, that's, that's the first step in, in the master plan. Looking forward to seeing it unfold, Mason. Pleasure, man. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks for having me on. And um, yeah, like I said, big shout out to all my sponsors and um, everyone supporting me back home. Uh, after this fight, I will come home for a few weeks. Uh, hopefully, we'll see what happens. But um, I'll be home for a few weeks to celebrate Christmas. And then, uh, like I said, we'll see what the future holds. But um, thanks to everyone who's been supporting from back home, all my sponsors and everything. And uh, yeah, can't wait to really show off, um, well, the level I'm at at the moment. Maximum respect. Nice one. Good luck. Thank you.